Spielberg's massive blockbuster, paleontologist Alan Grant and Ellie Statler and mathematician Ian Malcolm are among a select group chosen to tour an island theme park populated by dinosaurs created by prehistoric DNA. This is Jurassic Park on Night at the Movies on the Crossborder Interviews with Chris Brown and Michael Nichols Pate. Ghost of Costa Rica. And I've spent the last five years setting up a kind of biological preserve. What kind of park is this? We've made living biological attractions so astounding that they'll capture the imagination of the entire planet. It's, it's a dinosaur. <laughs> There's no doubt our attractions will drive kids out of their minds. Grandpa! We're gonna make a fortune with this place. We're going to open next year, that is if the lawyers don't kill me first. What species is it? It's a Velociraptor. The park will open with the basic tour you're about to take. Don't you see the danger, John, inherent in what you're doing here? Genetic power is the most awesome force the planet's ever seen, but you wield it like a, a kid that's found his dad's gun. These are aggressive living things that have no idea what century they're in, and they'll defend themselves violently if necessary. Dinosaurs and man, two species separated by 65 million years of evolution, just been suddenly thrown back into the mix together. How can we? possibly have the slightest idea of what to expect. Hey, what'd I touch? Uh, we didn't touch anything, we stopped. Anybody hear that? It's a, um, it's an impact armor is what it is. Maybe it's the power trying to come back on. What the hell, what the hell, what the hell? Fences are failing all over the park. Shut down the return of all offenses. Fairly alarmed here. Hold on to your butt. Oh no. Jurassic Park back online. Yeah, that's nice. Here we go. Come on, come on, come on. We gotta get out of here. Gotta get out of here. The only thing that matters now are the people we love. Which is just a delay. That's all it is. All major theme parks have delays. Yeah, but John, if the Pirates of the Caribbean breaks down, the pirates don't eat the tourists. You never have control. That's the illusion. Boy, I hate being right all the time. Michael Nichols Pate, Jurassic Park. What up? What I up? Love this movie. Oh my god, I do too. It is like gorgeous. <laughs> hate it. <laughs> anyway, um, Jurassic Park. What are your thoughts? As we just I, said, Alan Grant, Ellie, Ian. Oh! I think that the special effects in this movie are far superior to any of the ones in the new movies. And I will die on that hill. I think the use of the puppetry that they did use for this was fucking brilliant. And it looks and feels more lifelike and realistic than any of the CGI bullshit that we get for Jurassic World 1 and 2. And even Jurassic Park 3, they started using mostly CGI and it just it looks like trash. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, this felt like a kind of a new way to tell stories because you hadn't seen puppetry on this scale before. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that they were all completely puppets. Some were mechanics. Uh, I didn't know the Tyrannosaurus Rex was mechanical, but, yep. and there was some CGI, even with the Brontosaurus as they get to the island for the first time. And Ellie's like, oh my God, look at the Brontosaurus. Sure. But 
it fit. With the newer ones, as you were saying, with Jurassic World, it seems like, hey, we're going to rely so heavy on fucking CGI, it's going to look bad. And I give Steven Spielberg more credit than Colin, whatever the hell his name is, who's doing the new uh, Jurassic Park. Uh, And we're going to cut into a commercial break right now, which we don't have. So I'm going to continue talking because someone just tried to call me. And that's the way the world works. Okay. I, I, I like Sam Neill. I'm a massive Sam Neill fan. Sure. Alan, Alan Grant is fucking Great awesome. Character. Great character. Lord Dern, my first Great introduction character. to Lord Dern. And who hasn't fantasized as a gay man of Mr. Jeff Goldblum on the back Gorgeous. of a car, shirt ripped, just going, we need to run. Go quicker. Go quicker. I'm like, yes. Yes, queen. <laughs> I love the acting. The performances were top notch. It was a good script. Did you read In the book beforehand? Of, I, I did not. Well, when the movie came out when I was very young. Don't say And it. I watched it for the <laughs> first time. The first time I ever watched the movie, it was fairly new and I was five or six. And... I, so no, I did not, I could not read much at all. Um, Have you I, read it when since I first then? Watched this. Oh, you yeah, know, it's one of my favorite books. I think in terms of adaptation, if I read the book beforehand and then seen the movie, I might be looking at this a little less favorably because it just does not follow the book. And the book is so good. It's one of my favorite books. If it's not my favorite. It's much better. It's much better than, the book is much better than the movies. And it's one of those, Michael Crichton is an amazing author. He has done some freaking fantastic books. Um, Steven Spielberg is a fantastic director barring West Side Story. Absolutely. Wow. Exactly. I think this was a match made in heaven. Steven Spielberg did this movie justice. He put his own spin on it. But if you read the book and you watch the movie, you're going, okay, okay. Not the happiest go lucky, but only four people live in the book. And I mean, that doesn't work for movie for like an action adventure family movie like Jurassic Park kind of is. Like you can't have only four of the characters live. You have to have more than that. And so that's why characters that did die in the book got to live. And honestly, like Jeff Goldblum's character dies in the book and then suddenly like in the second book is they're like oh just kidding he's still alive and it's oh like, my god he's what? so alive right now guys look at him um <laughs> so eh. you, you had some really big names in this movie as well for the time and even today samuel mm-hmm. jackson you had newman off of seinfeld you had two of the kids i don't know where they're from but I know they kind of did stuff after, but it wasn't that big. But Laura Dern is kind of a big person now. Sam Neill was probably the biggest name outside of Jeff Goldblum. So you had the draw. And who just doesn't love dinosaurs, right? Richard Attenborough, too. Richard. Oh, my God. I forgot Richard Attenborough. Mr. Yeah. Um, But you had such a good cast for a good story. And a good atmosphere. You you went into that feeling like you were actually on the island watching these dinosaurs do what they were doing. It felt tense. It felt suspenseful. And like, it wasn't like scary, scary. There was definitely a couple of jump scare moments that like felt amplified because it wasn't CGI. They actually had like the puppets or the or the mechanical puppets kind of come through and like, it just was so well executed that like, even though it's not a pure adaptation from the book, I see why. And I understand as making in kind of in making movies that are more geared towards like family-ish because like so, adults don't care so much about dinosaurs. I know, I, I love li- dinosaurs. This I live in Alberta. Spawned, <laughs> this movie spawned a love of dinosaurs for me, but like, I, I just... I can see why they made the changes they made. Mm. I I'm not sure about you, but I I can tell this is this is going to be embarrassing to tell. But yeah, whatever. Um, after the toilet scene where the guy gets ripped off the toilet, I could not use the washroom for a good about month. 
It was horrible. Every time I walked in, and I was at the end, I kind of knew it was a movie, but it was still scary to me, right? It was still, and that was the one part where for a while I could not watch it. Even when we brought it home on VHS, yes, VHS, and we watched it over and over again, I would run out of the room because that scene was coming up and I knew it was coming up and I was scared shitless, literally and figuratively. <laughs> What's VHS? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I when watched I, this on VHS. When I brought it home on Betamax, it was the cool thing to do. Betamax <laughs> pass. Um, no, I watched. I watched this on VHS. It's 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 one of my favorite movies. And it, I usually put it in my top five. And you have to remember, this was kind of the starting of the blockbuster summer hits because this came out in the no. Jaws was. No, well, I would disagree with that. I would disagree with that. I would say the the true movie experience, because you have to remember the 80s, they like people went to the movies, but that that wasn't like a good old fashioned thing. This brought the blockbuster to reality, right? You released it in a timely fashion, you put it in, you do a lot of PR around it because Jaws was just the movie. Jurassic Park had like Pizza Hut, had Taco Bell, had Seven Eleven, had Seven Eleven. Oh, you mean had, like you mean like the branding with the franchises, the, 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 the blockbuster franchising. Because no, Jaws was what like defined and created. Yeah, yeah, the summer blockbuster. Nope. It I, the girls are fighting. Um, <laughs> we love we we love each other. Mom and dad are fighting right now. It's okay. <laughs> um. I disagree because Jaws is really what set that apart. I will say that I will agree and say that Jurassic Park redefined what it meant to be a summer blockbuster. But Jaws was the first and I will die on that hill. Well, if you want to go that far, Star Wars was the first. Bitch! I, I think Jaws was before Star Wars. Because Jars was Jars. Jaws was 75. Star Wars was Star Wars 4. A New Hope A was New 70. Hope. 77. And Jaws was 75? Yep. Well, I don't think that Jaws was the movie that people went to go see, though. It, they did! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> they did! Okay, Kermit. Um, so let's move to the, the star rating because I feel like this is going to get into a complete yelling fest here in about 10 minutes and we'll yell at each other afterwards so I don't feel like I'm attacking Michael. No, we won't yell at each other. So Michael, out of five, what would you give this uh, beautiful 1990 whatever the time it came out movie? I would no. give it a five because I can't do half. I'm literally, I was the one who said, let's not do half. And I regret it every day of my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, I hey. really own it. I own it. I will own it. I will sit on it. Sit and twist. Uh, I'm going to be generous to this movie. I'm going to give it a five as well. I like the acting. I like the movie production. I like the directing. I like the storytelling. I like the uh, animatronics of the animals, the uh, the animals, the dinosaurs. So I'm going to get. They're not Muppets. They're uh, Muppets. I would give it a good old five out of five. And then after this movie, the entire series went. Oh. <laughs> I like Lost World. Well, we might have to just do Lost World in the next segment because that's a great <laughs> segue into doing <laughs> Lost World. So with that, that has been a good 10 out of 10 stars for Jurassic Park. Number one released in 1997. This has been Jurassic Park on the night of the movies on the crossword interviews with Chris Brown and Michael Nichols fate. We'll be back. Ha-ha! <laughs>